In this video we'll introduce the basic controls and coordinated turns. Let's start by introducing the different parts of a glider. Firstly, there's the wings, and then there's the fuselage, which is the body of the glider and includes all of this. But we also divide the fuselage up into a series of smaller parts. Um, so we talk about the tail of the glider, which is this part, and includes the subparts of the rudder, the fin, and the tailplane. And depending on the design of the glider, the tailplane can be in a low position, like it is here, or in the high position at the top of the fin. We also talk about the nose at the front of the glider, and the cockpit, which is where the pilots sit, and on top of the cockpit, the canopy. Here's the same picture again, but this time I've labelled the main control surfaces. Again, at the tail of the plane, there is the rudder, and the elevator, which is across the back of the tailplane. And then on the wings, there are the ailerons. The glide has other control surfaces that we'll cover in a later video. Now let's look at the controls. On the right hand side, I'm showing a simplified view of the cockpit. There's the control stick here, which is between your legs and you operate with your right hand. And there's the rudder pedals, which are on your left and right feet. We also have two of the basic instruments. There's the airspeed indicator, which shows how fast we're going and the yaw string, which we'll come back to later. The first of the controls we're going to look at is the elevator, which controls pitch. The elevator is here on the glider, and pitch is movement in this direction. And it is controlled by moving the stick forwards and backwards. If you pull the stick back, the nose rises, there's less ground in view, and the airspeed has decreased. Conversely, if you push the stick forward, the nose lowers, more ground comes into view, and the airspeed increases. It's important to remember that for each position of the stick, there's a corresponding attitude and speed of the glider. It's also worth remembering that the elevator is the most sensitive of the controls, and so quite small movements of the stick can result in quite large changes in speed. Now let's look at the ailerons. These are controlled by moving the stick side to side in this kind of direction and cause the glider to roll, which is a rotation in this direction. If you move the stick to the right, the glider will roll to the right and will continue to roll to the right until you centralize the stick. So the stick controls not the angle of bank, but the rate of roll. So the further you move the stick to the right, the faster it will roll to the right. To perform a turn, we simply roll the glider by moving the stick to one side, in this case to the right, and then centralizing the stick. And the glider will continue to fly in a circle. You will find that you need to apply a small amount of back pressure on the stick to keep the nose up otherwise the nose will drop in the turn and the speed will increase. The same is true to the left. If you move the stick to the left, the glider will continue to roll to the left until you centralize the stick. Notice as well that the ailerons move in opposite directions on each wing. One will always go up while the other will always go down. To turn to the left, we use the same procedure. We move the stick to the left to roll the glider into the turn and then we centralize the stick to maintain the angle of bank and provide a small amount of back pressure to keep the nose up. When we want to exit the turn, we move the stick to the right, the glider rolls out to the right, and once the wings are level, we centralize the stick and ease off the back pressure. A well executed turn, you will keep a constant speed throughout the entire process. The last of the controls we're going to introduce in this video is the rudder. The rudder is on the tail of the glider, here, and is controlled by the rudder pedals, which move back and forward using your feet, like so. 
The rudder pedals are linked, so if the right rudder pedal moves forward, the left rudder pedal moves backwards, and vice versa. The rudder pedals control yaw of the glider. It's important to note that yawing the glider is not turning the glider. So the glider will not go round in a circle if yawed, but it will change the direction that the nose is pointing relative to the direction that the glider is travelling. In this example, we've pushed the right rudder pedal forward and the glider has yawed to the right. And here we've moved the left rudder pedal forwards and the glider has yawed to the left. One of the first things you need to master in gliding is coordinated controls. You may have noticed that when we rolled the glider to the right, the yaw string had moved to the left. This is due to a property known as adverse yaw, and whenever you try to roll the glider in one direction, it will always try to yaw in the opposite direction. This is what we use the rudder for. We compensate for the adverse yaw by feeding some of the rudder in in the same direction that we're rolling. Here's an example of a coordinated turn to the right. You'll notice at first that the stick has been moved to the right to roll the glider to the right and a corresponding amount of right rudder has been put in to keep the yaw string straight. Once we've reached the desired angle of bank, we centralise the controls and apply a small amount of back pressure on the stick to keep the nose up and keep the glider turning. The glider will remain turning like this until we apply left rudder and left stick to level the wings and exit the turn. In summary then, we've introduced the elevator, ailerons and rudder which control pitch, roll and yaw and we've learnt that you can control pitch by moving the stick forwards and backwards and that the position of the stick sets your attitude and therefore your speed. You can control roll by moving the stick left and right and that the position of the stick controls the rate of roll. So if you keep the stick in one position, the glider will continue to roll until you centralise the stick. And we've learnt that you can control yaw by moving the rudder pedals forward and back. We've also learnt that a good coordinated turn requires you to coordinate the stick and the rudder in terms of both roll and yaw and requires a small amount of back pressure for you to keep the nose up during the turn.